Ladies and gentlemen, the first thing on the agenda this morning is um, I'm going to call on a very talented individual. He's here to disrupt, you know, the creative system, the creative environment here, because that's what he does. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for the one they call Jeff Akor. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he's here to sing the national anthem, Jeff Akor. Our very own Templar. Please, could we? I would like to urge everyone to please be on your feet while we take the national anthem. Arise, O Compatriot. Nigeria's call obey to serve our fatherland with love and strength and faith. The Thank you so much, Jeff Akko. What a great day to be a Nigerian. Once again, welcome everyone to the BRF Gap Fest 2. Remember that we want you guys to share the experience that you're having here on all of your social media platforms. So if you take a picture, if something speaks to you and you want to tweet it, please feel free to do so. And don't forget to include the hashtag BRF Gap Fest 2. Now, before we move forward, I think it's very important that we take a look back at the very first BRF Gap Fest that happened last year. Now, I was here personally, and I can tell you for a fact that it was an absolutely beautiful outing. Now, there was, of course, a keynote address by our keynote speaker, His Excellency, BRF. There was also an address from Mrs. Ibukun Awoshika, as well as two absolutely engaging panels. Last year was also pretty festive, as it happened to be BRF's birthday as well. So it was very interesting to celebrate all of that with the BRF Gap Fest. But I'm going to stop talking right now because what better way to share the experience with you than to show you. We have a short 10 minute clip that shows the highlights from last year's BRF Gap Fest. So if you can please direct your attention to the screen right now and yes, enjoy the experience that we got to enjoy last year. and sunny Thursday afternoon in Lagos than to celebrate the life of a man that has been truly exceptional. We simply call him BRF. Now we're out here today for what we've tagged Gap Fest 2018. It's the inaugural edition and if you're not here, not to worry. I promise to be your eyes, your ears and maybe even your voice as we celebrate out here today His Excellency Babatunde Raji Fashola. I'd like to welcome you to the inaugural um, Babatunde Raji Fashola Gap Fest. Um, and I'd also like to take the opportunity to wish a happy 55th birthday to His Excellency. Perhaps, 
there's nothing that gives him greater intellectual stimulation than engaging with young people. So we felt it was quite appropriate that for to celebrate him rather than a party or you know any great ceremony that we would have something that um, celebrates the amazing achievements of the young people in this country. What can we expect from you in the coming years, politically? Man proposes, God disposes. Exactly. Dan says it here. Let's understand that wherever you are, whatever position you occupy, whatever opportunity you have. To influence things in order to create value for this nation by strategically empowering that huge population that is an energetic population that can deploy their energy for growth of this nation. There are two key areas to us increasing our productivity as a nation women and our youth. Why are we going to keep the largest portion of our population, which is made up of youths right now from maximally deployment. I leave that with you as a question. I just want you to remember, we love your children. They will live in a world after you. And that world and that society they will live in will consist of other young people that are the young people of Nigeria. Except we take care of all of them, we cannot go to bed unless they are your children. Thank you must have a conscious of training our own youth to get to the next level. You see, because when you look at the population, especially like today, 70% uh, of our population, they are below 35 years of age. So obviously, you know, if uh, this youth, they decide to take over power, they can take anybody in and take anybody out. But from all that you have seen so far, from your experience, are we still mouthing it or are we beginning to take steps? to equip and get young people involved in politics and governance. It's not an issue that keeps people out of politics in the first place. It's just the nature of our politics. And just very briefly, I'd like to talk about one or two, what I call tales by moonlight that we hear about politics in Nigeria. So usually they'll tell young people, go and start at the grassroots. Go and start in the local government, which is not the bad advice. The way you um, use get involved in politics as we speak right now is um, either through elective office, running for elective office, or through appointment. Now, if you run for elective office, um, you thank God the threshold for running has been reduced. But when you run for elective office, there's, um, there's a brand of politics that's practiced in Nigeria sometimes, which is um, the, the politics of money, money politics. And that serves as a barrier to entry for youths into elective office because you need to have the capital to be able to get involved most of the time. And for appointed, most of the time, it requires the goodwill of the principal, whether the president in appointing ministers or the government. And so that serves as a barrier to entry as well because the power doesn't really lie with um, the individual or the person seeking for office. All of the most uh, remarkable people in Nigeria, uh, I'm sure, even as you celebrate your birthday today, uh, your family, Lagos State, and Nigeria are quite proud of you uh, for your numerous contributions to national. Not many governors have, have, have talked about the idea of calling youth entertainers, calling them together and say, come sit down, I want to listen to you, tell me what your problem is, tell me how I can solve it, tell me that director, this is what you He did this over 20 times, too many is time in power. He go to the state house and sit down, bring him in, and dine and wine with him. And it happens all the time. And even though a lot of things didn't happen because of time, he gave us that confidence. And one thing that most youth need is confidence. What do you think is going to be Mr. Fashola's next step politically? Ah, uh, well, the, the next step, we leave that to God. Uh, we leave that to God. But uh, the most important thing that he has shown that is 
very competent. Uh, he, he applies diligence to his work. So whatever work he gets, he does it well. But in case you are missing it, the British royal family makes sure that every male child serves in their army. How many of you will allow your children to serve in the Nigerian army? And this is a man, you put your head down. <laughs> that is service to the fatherland. How many of us will allow our children to serve as doctors and nurses in the health center in the local council? That is where we need them the most. The primary health care center is where we can make the most impactful uh, uh, strike the most impactful blow in reducing infant and maternal mortality. Primary schools are the place where foundational education is constructed. A for apple, B for boy, one, two, three, four. That's where it is laid. Those who miss it, who after they have made money, now go back. You will see that they call it is, was, and call was, is. The foundation was bad. That is where we can make the most impact in building the Nigeria that we want, in mapping the future. Primary level. Do you want your children to work there? Those in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> there are Men do we want? If the children you have invested so much of your money in and given the best education become that police force, will they behave the way that SARS was behaving? Think about it. 